why is this important for entrepreneurs? So I think maybe a lot of you can answer it. If you want to comment in the chat box, I'm going to ask, uh, I'll open the floor a little bit after towards the end of the slide. Um, but, you know, just overarching, I got this from a reference from an uh, academic article um, by Schmidt in 2012 already. So this is quite a while, uh, eight years ago. But she's based, they, they basically said creativity is the critical skill for entrepreneurs and entre entrepreneurship training. However, today, I don't really see it that often. I do see it in design thinking courses. But in business courses, and when we're looking at entrepreneurship and even leadership programs, there's not a lot of creativity that actually comes in. I know future studies do a lot of this because there's a lot of scenario planning and there's a lot of imagination going into it and creativity forms part of that. But in entrepreneurial circles, how have your creativity training been going being entrepreneurs? Um, but basically the, the whole gist of this is that the world is constantly changing. Look at this here. What, what a <laughs> nightmare, what an opportunity, what an absolute time to be alive. Um, so when we get to these sort of hurdles, when it, whether it's a recession, whether it's a growth or spurt in the economy, whether there's opportunities or whether there's downfalls, what, where do you need to pivot to? And how do you think about it. So that's kind of how this creativity and how divergent thinking positions itself um, and really just allowing and expanding the possibilities that are, that's out there that your business plan might not have actually been adapted to. Um, so yeah, it's more the, the tendency, like I said, is more the tendency in a lot of our lives is to think convergently, get to that one solution, get to that one opportunity. But before you get there, look at the foundation that 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 peak might have been reached on. So look at the foundation, look at the basis. Um, so yes, um, I see there's someone in the comment section that said it's got me to think faster. Um, and there's ideas flooding to mind. Exactly. So it's exciting. It's 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 motivating. There's a lot of studies that said there's a link between creativity, motivation, actualization, innovation, and all of those things I've just said form such an important uh, 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 process and is such an important part of the entrepreneurial success at the end of the day. Little, I am just uh, on this. Sorry, yes. Liesl. I see Craig has raised his hand a short while back. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yes, Craig. Good. Yeah, now just I'm just thinking about so so one thought, Liesl, Perhaps can you can you clarify a little bit for us the different the the, the relationship between divergent thinking and creative thinking, and then uh, there was something else I had in mind. Uh, sure. Thank you for that question. It's a good question because creativity is quite a big umbrella. There's a lot of thought processes that fall and goes right slots under that umbrella. So divergent thinking is just one component of that creativity. So it's basically an aspect of it. Um, when we're looking at creativity, we're looking at divergent thinking. We're looking at convergent thinking. We're looking at design thinking. We're looking at a lot of things. Problem solving mm. involves creativity. Mm. Mm. Uh, looking for the future. So mm. I do use it interchangeably, but divergent yeah. thinking isn't necessarily creative thinking, but divergent thinking is a component or it's a thought process of creative thinking. Mm. Is that a little bit? Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And how does, how does it relate to open-mindedness? You know, so linear thinking to me is, is a closed-minded uh, thought process or approach or perspective, <clears throat> excuse me. Whereas, op so open-mindedness open -mindedness relating to this? So open-mindedness, if you can just think about it, just, just the word, open. And use it, your mind needs to be almost... Um, Acceptance, uh, accepting the abundance of ideas, the abundance yeah. of, of, of that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> if you're closed minded, you might just look at one avenue or one direction or one um, sort of pathway. But if you're well, looking I'm, at open mindedness, there's various pathways that you can well, And also, sorry, Liesl. Sorry, what I like to, uh, what helps me to practice an open mindset is one, to, to know and understand this thing called abundance, but also that I tell myself, and it's really an affirmation I use, is that I am open to receiving and accepting new possibilities. And, and with, that, with that convincing myself that I'm open to receiving new possibilities and new ideas, 
fresh ideas, that seems to help me with, with developing this thing called an open mind. Um, yeah. I don't know if that, that makes sense to you, Liesl. That's a very valid comment. Thank you, Liesl. Um, for everyone in the call, uh, Liesl van Royen is Liesl and I'm Liesl Marie. It's been a lot of confusion. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that comment. And also something that's very important and dear to my heart is that in the climate that we're in and in our, in our country that we're in, we've got so many cultures. We've got culture rich individuals in this, in, this, in this country. And even in the world, now that COVID has expanded the global platform, and I'm working, I was on a call with, with international people last week. And you have to be very open-minded when it comes to cultural diversity. And the richness of the diversity is when everybody can be allowed to, to give an idea. Maybe it gives a perspective that you didn't consider because it, you weren't part of that culture, but it gives a really good nugget, gold nugget of amazing, amazing ideas and opportunities. So it also broadens that global perspective, the global uh, and the local perspectives too, and bringing diversity and inclusion back together. I know I'm sounding like a very big optimist, but that is what open-mindedness means to me. Um, yeah, no. yeah, all right. We, we, we have to, as entrepreneurs, we have to be eternal optimists. And I, I just want to mention as well, um, Diesel Marie, there's a there's an awesome book called The Creative Curve. I don't know if you've come across it. Uh, it's by Alan Gannett. I can share the link in the chat if anyone's interested in it. But one of the really stories in there that that stuck really stuck with me was the the study of um, bus drivers in London versus the black cab taxi drivers in London and and their brain um, activity. And how the bus drivers in London, because their routes are fixed and, you know, they do the same thing every day, they have the same perspective every day, they probably see the same people every day, the, their brain activity was particularly low. Whereas the taxi drivers in London with, you know, having to uh, deal with different traffic patterns, uh, you know, different customers going to different places and in the first place having to learn the the, the maps and and do extensive exams on on the whole of the, of the um, London you know traffic uh, diversity uh, and the maps their their brain activity is is completely different and quite um uh engaging and developing as you know depending on what they're dealing with so it, that was a fascinating story out of the creative curve well, thank you so much for sharing that and please do put it in the chat um, yeah i'm gonna i've it got it an now amazing, amazing, amazing um, yeah. resource maybe to have but if we move on just to the case studies, I'm not really going to go in depth. I just want to kind of tickle or, or prickle the curiosity in you. So I'm just kind of highlighting these um, companies. We all know Nokia was at its heyday. I mean, I grew up when I was a teenager. My first phone was a Nokia, what is it, 33K. <laughs> they were indestructible. But anyway, they were, they didn't do anything wrong, but they lost the absolute front runner as a market leader and was just consumed by iPhone and Samsung and all these people. Same with the Blackberry. However, Blackberry and Nokia, please do go Google these two companies. It's fascinating how they're trying to revive themselves. Nokia has just signed a partnership with NASA because they want to be the first cellular um, technology company that puts 4G on the moon. Now talking about possibilities that are out of this world, there's a little bit of a dry joke for you right there. But just go read up on this. Uh, it's fascinating to see how they had to pivot. And the reason why a lot of their downfalls happen is same with Blockbuster. Blockbuster is like Mr. Video. It was a video chain. I mean, I used to go, I remember as a child going and pick videos and being upset when it, my favorite video was taken out and I had to wait or pay the penalty fines. Then Netflix came along, but they were kind of, Blockbuster was actually the first Netflix in a way, but they were so focused on their chain stores that they forgot about what was happening in the in the technology world and in the innovation space that they the ship sailed and now look at Netflix now so please do go and and go google those as, as just an idea of where divergent thinking and not looking at various possibilities even future possibilities to adapt to it is crucial especially as an entrepreneur 